Hello and welcome to Infinity. Sometimes it's useful to select for tones, which in other words, greys or colours which are near grey. And then you can use that to shape the picture in interesting ways. Let's have a look here, first of all, as to how we can go around selecting for that, because we need to do it via a little calculation. So what I've got here is a pixel. In fact, all the pixels in this block here have a value like this. Let's bring in the colour. There we go. So you've got a low green, moderate blue and a higher red. Notice if I push the green here and I'm stretching the maximum and the minimum here, it becomes more colourful. And if I bring it in, it becomes less colourful. And in fact, the closer these get together, the more grey it becomes. Until when they're all the same value, you get yourself a pretty good grey. So, I can calculate the minimum. I can ask Affinity which is the minimum colour. And I can say what is the maximum value, because it's values it gives you, actually not colours. And then I can say, give me a range here. And I want it to be within this sort of distance. The maximum minus minimum, which is the greyness. I only want those which fit within A. Well, it doesn't fit within A here. So I could actually, in calculating it, take the A, then subtract maximum minus minimum, which is the distance here, and the result's going to be negative. And because you can't have a negative value in pixel values, then it becomes zero, which means don't use it effectively. And now if I look at it like this, now I've got it a lot more grey here because the maximum and the minimum are closer together and they fit within this range. This whole thing could slide up and down, by the way, it's not just fixed here. But maximum and the minimum and take A away from that, and you're going to get a positive number, which you get, then can use that number you can use as a kind of measure of the, the greyness that you want to select. Let's do it and it can see better then. This over here, out the way, and we'll go to Life Filters and Procedural Texture, where we can do a calculation. And I'm going to press plus to bring in a value here. I don't want red, so I'm turn that off. I want A, which is alpha, which is transparency, and use that. Now I can say A minus open brackets, maximum r comma g comma b minus minimum r comma g comma b and then close the brackets all together. It goes back to the original picture because I haven't given it an A. So I need to go down here and range between 0 and 1. That's what I want. And now when I change this you can see it's gradually going to become more and more. It looks like it's transparent because it's just selecting the values of A there. But it's difficult to see what that is. So what we can do here is extend this equation a bit around it. Divide that by B. So I'll give myself a B here. Just add one there and that automatically falls to the, goes to the next letter B. And this effectively is a hardness control. Because if I bring this down the edges become harder on them being soft. In fact, if I get right down close to zero, it becomes quite solid edges, hard edges here, which does show me the extent because I can now move this up and down. And what I can do with this, let's do it as an example. If I hit Control J just to duplicate this layer, I don't want the procedural texture again on the bottom one, so I've just got it on the top one. Now go to the top one and I'll put a blend mode here, just of overlay, but you can use other ones. Now, if I move this up and down here, you can see that line across the sky is moving. In your image, you probably don't want that, but this is the hardness is, is right to this end. So if I drag this off here, see it's softening that line and it's gradually softening it. What an effect is happening if I take off the bottom layer so you can see it, as I move this up, 
see the edges are just getting softer and softer. So this is a case hardness, softness control. So you can take that as you want. You can also in this use all kinds of other blend modes. So if you just sort of just scan through the different effects, you can see that a lot of these are actually really quite interesting. Some burn, some sort of darker and so on. Even if you go down to something like subtraction, you can get sort of in exclusion. Look at this different. You just try stuff. This is the thing. Blend modes, you don't necessarily need to know what's happening. But it is useful. Uh, and you find one you like. Look at that reflect. That's a very hard, gritty sort of thing, isn't it? And even if you take that, then you can still go back here and play with these to give you the kind of effect that you want. So let's make that really soft and try up and down here. So there's somewhere in here, this a, that's a quite interesting sort of fairly hard edged effect. So there you go. That's how it works. There's going to be a macro for it. I'm going to show that in another video and it's going to be give you even more control. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.